So in October 2022, last year, I submitted the completed manuscript of my book, uh, Decision Intelligence, Human Machine Integration for Decision Making to my publisher, Taylor and Francis. Uh, and the book will be published this month, uh, April of 26th. So I'm quite excited about this book. And this is the preface of my book where I say, imagine for a moment that you are making one of your life's most important decision. And this decision could be something like investing in a big project or starting a new business. Now this decision requires a lot of research, for example, right? A lot of uh, analysis of massive amounts of information, but you don't have that much of time. Well, what if you could just download an app and uh, enter your query or question in natural language, which is your own language, and in just a few seconds, this app gives you the answer because what it does is it just goes and finds the most suitable and appropriate data and uh, the appropriate model and performs analysis in seconds and gives you the result. And in addition, it also gives you a list of recommendations and some actionable insights. Wouldn't that be awesome? So instead of making such an important decision based on intuition only, you can use data-driven decision making. Wouldn't that be awesome? And to the end, I say, this might sound like a part of a sci-fi fiction novel, but it is not. Leading edge technological systems that help us make better and quicker decisions are becoming a reality today. The emerging discipline is called decision intelligence. So, as I told you, that I submitted this manuscript in uh, October last year, something remarkable happened between October 2022 and April 2023. Which is not. OpenAI released ChatGPT in November 2022. Microsoft's Bing Chat was made available to public in March 2023, last month. And Google launched Bard last month, March 2023. Now, what are, what are these things actually? These are kind of conversational AI platforms, chatbots, where you can just go and answer a question and put a question, and these apps actually come up with pretty good answers and a list of recommendations. Something like you can, you can ask questions like, how should I introduce my three-year-old daughter to fly fishing? Or write a simple code for linear regression in Python, or things like this. A lot of it is about creating content, right? Because this is about, a, you know, a generated AI. So it creates content for you too, but it is also a great tool to assist you in your decisions. According to MIT Tech Review, ChatGPT is the fastest growing internet service ever because in just two months after its launch, it reached about 100 million users worldwide. This is game changing. So Jeffrey Hinton, who is also known as the father of artificial intelligence, he, he agrees and he said it in his interview uh, with CBS Mornings that uh, this shift, this particular shift is comparable in scale with industrial revolution, invention of electricity, or maybe the wheel. So yeah, we are actually entering a very exciting era. So how, how do we, how these platforms actually work? I was, I was talking about this, you can ask all these types of questions and I have tried most of these questions, but my favorite is this one, second last year. Should I buy a red car or a blue car? So I went to ChatGPT and I kind of you know, this question, should I buy a red car or a blue car? So they told me how uh, well blue cars are more sophisticated and luxurious, whereas red cars are seen as more sporty and exciting. And it also generated analysis on four different criteria. And four different criteria were resale value of the car, uh, then it was safety, climate, and individual's personal preference. So as I compared red and blue car on these four criteria, I decided 
that I should buy a white car. Right? Because according to the analysis, white cars have higher resale value and they're safer to drive. And here's the thing, I'm not that rich. So resale value is an important factor for me. And I'm a really a nervous driver. I'm not a good driver. So safety is important to me too. So this is amazing. This is, this is what decision intelligence can, can do for us. Now here's the thing, why did I even ask this question about cars, really? It's because I have made a mistake in the past. So I'm not sure if you can see this picture clearly, but this is a car, a red Pontiac car that I bought in 2017. Uh, when I came to the United States, actually I came here in 2016 that I bought my first car in the United States in 2017. And when I look at this car now, I don't even think it's a pretty car. <laughs> but at that moment, it just it just felt perfect. Uh, because uh, I, I still remember when I went to this dealership, I told them my budget, which was not a lot. So they took me to this uh, lot of pre-owned cars. And the moment I saw this car, I immediately made a decision in my mind that I'm going to buy this car. And every car, each car, I, I saw after this car, it just didn't work out because I had already made my decision. Now, why? Because my mom loved drive cars. And my mom passed away in 2014. And during these days when I came here, I was missing my mom a lot. So when I saw this car, well, so I ended up buying the car, and after just two, three months, uh, it started to have serious problems. I had to spend a lot of money on repairs because it's a Pontiac car, and parts were not available, so I spent a lot of money. And today, as I as I reflect back, I, I think it was it was really a bad decision. That's really considering all the hassle that I had to do with the financial losses. It was really a bad decision. And why it happened? Because it was made purely of emotion and maybe a little bit of intuition. Because according to uh, Nobel laureate Daniel Kahneman, and he's also my favorite author, by the way, our brain follows the law of least effort. In simple terms, our brains are more lazy. We don't want to spend too much energy on making decisions, analyzing information, weighing the options, because you know we just we just want to take shortcuts. And emotions, mental models, moods, perceptions, and biases affect our judgments to a great extent. Now, mental models, we just know the mental models. These are these are the models that we create in our minds and our brains through our experiences. And our mental models are unique to us. They might not always be accurate. And here is the thing. Our memories aren't always accurate either because what our brain does is it stores the narrative of the experience and not the actual experience. What does that mean? So if you're sitting here and experiencing this talk, every moment you are, your experience actually changes, but your brain will store this experience as the narrative of this, this, this whole talk. Right, the experience, the narrative of experience, and not the actual experience. It's 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 tricky. Also, we get super overwhelmed when we see a lot of information. So we favor simple looking options over complicated and complex and ambiguous options. So our brain is actually quite limited. Sandra Ulianathan, who's a researcher, he performed a study in which, uh, with his team, he performed a study in which they trained an AI model uh, to make bail decisions. Uh, this model was uh, designed to predict flight risk of defendants. Now, what is flight risk? It is actually the likelihood that defendant will flee or will not appear in the court if released on bail. So they designed this model, created it, and tested it against the performance of actual human judges. Guess what they found? 
the artificial intelligence powered model performed much better than actually human judges at predicting at pre pre predicting the risk of defendants uh, to flight, the flight risk of defendants. It, it's it's remarkable, I think. Uh, these model, models are super super powerful because algorithmic decision making is not based on moods or emotions. What they are using is a sophisticated design to come to the conclusion. So you might not use AI or artificial intelligence model to make decisions such as who I should marry, but I think it's a pretty good idea to use AI to make decisions where, where you need to analyze a lot of information, such as which, which property I should invest in, because uh, they can help you a lot. And they are not perfect, by the way. And I'm not saying that they are hopeful, because the algorithms have their own uh, drawbacks, but they can help you optimize your decisions. Not optimization, you may have you have analyzed uh, enough alternatives and you know, you have evaluated alternatives. Otherwise, normally what we do is what we call a satisficing, satisficing in decision making. This means choosing the option that is just good enough. So you go and you search the menu, the option you just look kind of good enough, you choose and select it because you don't have time or energy to work with all the detailed analysis. So now you don't have to do what satisficing because you can optimize your decision using technology or artificial intelligence. So this is how I explain or I have defined decision intelligence in my book and I'm going to read this definition. Uh, decision intelligence is a framework that integrates human and machine intelligence to enhance the outcomes of all individual, team, and organizational decisions. It allows sharing the human decision-making load with AI-powered solutions and technologies. While AI deals with more routine and programmable tasks, humans will be able to channel their resources into making decisions that are more critical, complex, and require unique human capabilities, such as creative problem solving, critical thinking, systems thinking, and emotional intelligence. So decision intelligence doesn't just promote using artificial intelligence for decision making. What it does is, is it's kind of promoting or putting humans back into the loop, where humans do what they do the best and machines perform the task that they can handle better. It's amazing. It's, it's about integrating human and machine potential for more effective and efficient decision making. And this is where I'm going to explain four forms of decision intelligence and this is different decision intelligence tools that are available to us today. So the four forms of decision intelligence can be explained in terms of how much technology is involved in different steps of decision making? So here's the thing, we're learning two concepts here. Number one is decision making, number two is decision intelligence. So decision making is a process, right? Think about it. When, when you are deciding something like it's, it's a special event, maybe a birthday, and uh, you're just trying to figure out where you should go and uh, eat your lunch or dinner, so you identify the problem, you gather information, identify alternatives, and run with them, and finally you implement the decision and review the decision. Because mostly when, when we make a decision, we look back and think, was it really a good response? So we're actually doing all this and taking all these steps consciously or subconsciously in the way. So decision making, is a process. Now let's see here, on the left hand side, these gray boxes, by the way, uh, they are human involvement. This is where in these steps, you see humans are involved, where these gray boxes are located. And these hatched boxes are where technology is working. So the first form of decision intelligence is decision assistance in the bottom here. So in decision assistance, what happens is you, 
because you, you you know you see gray box here this means you as a decision maker you as a decision maker you identify the problem and then you gather information using technology again something like which restaurant should I dine in so you Google things up right what are the restaurants where vegan menus available or whatever uh, your preference is so uh, then you gather information you identify alternatives and you actually take responsibility for all the further steps, right? This gathering information might help you with step three and step four, but the purpose here is to use technology just to inform your decisions, right? Then comes the second level of decision intelligence, which is decision support. Uh, I'm sure you must have seen when you go to some healthcare institutions or maybe uh, college nurse, they ask you what's your full name and your date. And the moment they enter that information, they have your data, your information from them because they are using specialized decision support systems. Radio stores use our decision support systems, and these days companies are actually creating intelligent decision support systems, which can even make recommendations. So uh, in decision support, you identify uh, the problem, then uh, support system gathers information, identify all alternatives, evaluate alternatives, but then you uh, choose the best alternative, implement the decision, and make the decision. Now comes the interesting part. The third form of decision intelligence, decision augmentation, which is a relatively new form of decision intelligence where machines take more proactive and bigger role because these systems can even identify the problem. And I have seen uh, several demos from uh, of products from companies like Aero Technology, Xylem, Moodle AI, Terriers. These companies are actually offering some highly innovative decision intelligence, especially decision augmentation solutions uh, that can actually help you uh, make your processes more efficient. For example, how these systems actually work is, uh, for example, if you are taking an inventory management uh, interface and this interface is now connected to your enterprise data and maybe to some of uh, the big data sources. So if the system identifies that your inventory levels are going below 10% or some specific uh, threshold, it triggers the action. Okay, it goes and gathers information, identify alternatives, evaluate alternatives, and finally, uh, you know, uh, you can choose best alternative, implement the decision, and but it's, it's helping you a lot through the process. The final form and the most technology intensive form of decision intelligence is decision automation, where machines work completely autonomously. Okay, humans are merely involved in any of the step of decision making. So, a good example would be use of robotics or automation in uh, assembly lines and car manufacturing companies. These days, most big companies such as Ford, Nissan, and Toyota are using AI powered systems uh, in their assembly lines, and their processes are much faster and efficient today. So yes, full automation is the final level of, of decision intelligence. So this is great. Now, these are some applications of decision intelligence. And here's the thing. We are using decision intelligence without even calling it decision intelligence because it's, it's just about applying artificial intelligence or advanced technologies uh, to your decision making. We are making decisions uh, for our personal lives, such as choosing a career path, buying a property, or maybe organizing an event. By the way, you can go on uh, Microsoft's big uh, chat, and it has some great options for you, recommendations for you when it comes to event planning. I've tried that. Uh, industries are using decision intelligence heavily to optimize their inventory management or inventory price optimization, customer segmentation. Uh, to even smart manufacturing. But my favorite is decision intelligence for greater good. Today, artificial intelligence systems are used for environmental sustainability, 
conservation of resources, to wildlife conservation, and even policy making. Now, here's the thing. I understand there are certain ethical concerns around the use of artificial intelligence, and the biggest concern is, hmm, will humans be replaced completely by technology in the future? Uh, what about privacy? Are these a lot of books completely biased-free? So yes, there are a lot of ethical concerns that I accept. But I truly and strongly believe that if we design and utilize these AI systems with a strong commitment to protecting all life on Earth, including the planet itself, we can empower our decision and shape a smarter and better future with decision intelligence. So, thank you. And with this, my